The search for home, for belonging, is a recurring theme in all forms of art and is one of humanity's most vulnerable needs. Everybody has a sense of home, you know, everybody wants to feel this sanctuary and this feeling of like being valued and, and belonging. For me, the key term is searching, searching for home, because not everybody has that safe place where they can live and feel secure. I think that in this particular moment in time, everyone is at some level rethinking what home means. Agnes Scott College is pleased to present the exhibition Searching for Home at Dalton Gallery and is grateful to all who persevered during the pandemic to bring it to our campus. Visiting curator Dorothy Moy spent the last year recruiting artists whose works invoke a distinct resonance around the idea of home in all its iterations. Our aim is that the various meanings that arise from these artworks serve as food for thought for our visitors and as teaching tools in a variety of academic disciplines. With that intention in mind, we're sharing the thoughts of some of our faculty and participating artists. I think these ideas about home absolutely vary from um, person to person, uh, among different groups, based on their cultural background. The ability to make home is something that I think is very powerful and maybe even that connects all of the different pieces um, in the show, in the gallery, or that connects us as individuals. Everywhere we went, my mother made a home. When we lived in Botswana, my mother grew grass and a garden and flowers in the desert. People used to walk by our house and look at the, through the gate because they couldn't believe that she had grown grass in the desert. I made a home for myself here in Atlanta where I now live in uh, Lawrenceville, Georgia. Making a home can mean choosing between communities with good schools, transportation, safety and stability, or it may mean having no choice but to start from scratch and to possibly rely on government help or the kindness of others. Artist Beverly Buchanan's Happy Shack is a tribute to the spirit of shack dwellers whose communities dot the South. Through this bright piece, she invites us to notice the dignity that can exist in the face of poverty. Artist Just Self's work posits that finding home may be settling in a safe and secure physical location or in uncovering a safety net within oneself that's free of traumatic memories and shame. In the 1990s, participating artist Calvin Kimbrough photographed his marginalized neighbors who were part of Atlanta's open door community to convey the humanity of every person. During our current times of great uncertainty, quilt maker Marquetta Bell Johnson finds comfort in the ancestral African traditions of colorful patterned forms. An immigrant from England, Ruth Franklin summons the process of finding home in a new country through her Ellis Island Arrival series, charcoal drawings made from Library of Congress photographs. One thing that resonates with me is the idea of immigration and refugees and the idea that uh, home is something that has been lost or something that needs to be attained. Materials used by artist Jamel Wright Sr. refer to the great migration of black Americans from the South to the North as an aspect of the African diaspora. This work depicts the push and pull experienced by those who left the familiar in the hope of something better. For me, uh, migration plays a big part in my identity and uh, also what I consider home. Even in the United States, I am migrating between African American culture, especially living in the South, and general American culture, because there is a distinct difference culturally. Agnes Scott alumna, Yami Cambron, seeks to reshape the good immigrant, bad immigrant narrative in the U.S. with her public murals around Atlanta that imbue strength and ability in the faces of her subjects, such as this one in Decatur. For this exhibition, her artwork combines family photos from Mexico, the iconic monarch butterfly, and even her Agnes Scott ring. I think when you're undocumented, you grow up like a normal child and you don't really understand, even if you know you're undocumented, you don't understand 
what that actually means until you start to transition into adulthood. And so I think that for me, the concept of home started to really shift in that time where I, I started really feeling the fear of my own deportation, of maybe being separated from my family, and then you know just thinking of home being wherever I go and wherever I can create my work through these public spaces, through my murals. And so for me, um, and specifically with this piece, I wanted to show that my actual, like that action of me painting and creating work is my way of searching for home. Immigration is not always a choice. Artist Rueda Kadir carried a handmade cookie press to her new home of Decatur, Georgia, when she and her family escaped war-torn Syria. In her new home, she keeps alive the cookie-making tradition of her homeland. Ruby Franklin's artwork explores the longings that new arrivals feel for their homelands and rituals, based on her perspective as a resident of Clarkston, Georgia, home to tens of thousands of refugees from across the world. Seeing those photos just so preciously placed in these shadow boxes reminded me of how we hold on to those photos as our only way of, of holding on to home or the home that we left behind. The show impacts me in the way it juxtaposes the ideas of home, homelessness, and also moving in between places, which to me shows that home could be something that's mobile, temporary, and not always as permanent as we think it to be. Atlanta has a number of nonprofits, large and small, whose missions are to eliminate homelessness. Matt Housers creates simple plans for shelters that its volunteers can make to provide some of our city's homeless residents with a respite. Photographer Daniel Tropy's nonprofit, Yimby Georgia, which stands for Yes in My Backyard, focuses on feeding and listening to homeless people throughout Metro Atlanta. I have not met a homeless person that doesn't want a roof over their head. They want food in the refrigerator, a roof over their head, and dignity. I love to sit down with people and hear their stories and get a little insight into them. And then if I feel comfortable and they feel comfortable, I will ask them if I can photograph them. There is a very thin line between being housed and being unhoused. I find it astounding that in this country, in this age, there are millions of American citizens who don't have a place to put their heads. There's this idea of being emplaced that I study, how everything that we do and who, how we think about ourselves um, is emplaced, it's, it's located in place. And through my work, I study uh, groups who in some ways are displaced or have experienced some sort of displacement and watching and listening about how they deal with that. The motif of displacement as a result of climate or political change arises from the works of several participating artists in Searching for Home. Jennifer Shaw's work is really um, stunning in terms of thinking about place in a flooded condition. And I think once you see a place flooded, especially if it's in your home itself or nearby, you really never see it not flooded again. There is just no way to subtract that danger and that impact from the place you love most and the place you mean to be as safe as possible. Self-taught African-American artist, Sister Gertrude Morgan's painting depicts 1965's Hurricane Betsy, which wreaked havoc on New Orleans' Ninth Ward, home to many black people living in poverty. The real center for the relationship between climate change, climate and home, for me, is climate justice. The people and the places that are impacted the most by climate are underserved communities, communities of color, places where um, the, the margin of income is very, very small. So the difference between a house is a structure where people might sleep is different from the idea of a place where family congregates and a place that family attach symbolic meaning to. One way that I think about home is 
following the thoughts of a feminist cultural geographer, Doreen Massey, who defined home as the point where multiple social relations intersect historically and contemporary. When women migrate, they bring their memories or their histories with them um, and fashion a new world. The wildly untamed piece is about how women, a lot of times, migrate for the opportunity, for freedom. Whether intentionally or not, most of the artists in Searching for Home convey the notion of social relations as a form of home, a pillar for the ideal home. I was very touched by the work of Ethel Muhammad of Mississippi, not only because of the story that she tells in the work but because of the technique that she used, which is very intricate embroidery. Paintings by artists Bernice Sims and Clementine Hunter, on loan from the C.J. Williams collection, depict idyllic scenes filled with social interaction. Fiber artist Lynn Pollard created her piece, Nest, through the pierced brick parts of the wall outside Dalton Gallery intending for the ambiguities of home to be felt by its viewers. Agnes Scott alumna Leela Ross Wilburn's house plan books were conceived to help middle-class families build special homes without the fees charged by successful architects like herself. South Korean immigrant In Kyung Chun aims to create ideal spaces from which positive energy can arise during these uncertain times. Macy Lay's video installation, set in a contemporary home vignette, spotlights the COVID-19 inspired trend of people maintaining connections by keeping extended family dinners alive using regular Zoom calls. Home is where you are respected, where you're loved, where you can thrive, where you can dream, uh, where you can grow without restriction. So I think for a lot of people, Agnes Scott is a home and a refuge. I feel like when I'm creating, that's when I'm actually in control of what is happening. It's almost like I'm, I'm using it to, to take back this, this narrative and, and remind us that wherever we, home, we go, we can create home for ourselves. Jennifer Shaw's Ruby Slippers Photograph on Fabric closes out our video in a moving manner. Her artist statement for this piece is simple. In spite of it all, there's no place like home. We hope this video will inspire you to support our participating artists and everyone who worked tirelessly on this exhibition by visiting Searching for Home, in person or online. We are deeply grateful to the Margaret Virginia Philip Arts Endowment Fund for its continued support of the visual arts at Agnes Scott College.